and brothers. I have a feeling that you are here because you think that something has gone wrong. You are here because you are looking for solutions. Sisters, brothers, I can very well understand the anger and frustration that you feel about the present state of politics in the country today. You are disappointed and you feel let down. Some even feel ashamed of what they have done. But do not be. You want to change from the corrupt and inefficient PNN government so you are getting the other side a resounding majority of 29-12. Today, however, many in the electorate are so fed up with the present political chaos that they feel that another government will bring some kind of change. They are extremely fed up and frustrated. And, they are and in their desperation, they are calling out, elections now, elections now. This is the same feeling they had in 2010, when they were so fed up with the PNM and the Mani government, that they voted out the PNM and put in the PPG. But their problems remain the same. Some even say worse. I understand how you feel. But let me ask you one simple question. <coughs> if there were to be an election tomorrow, given the present system, what do you really, what, what do you think really is going to be the result? Our history has shown us that the elections will boil down to a racial battle. For 50 years it has happened, what will it change? And in that racial battle, if we are doing it on the present system, that is, either the PN will be in the government or the opposition, and the UNC will be in the opposition or the government. And nothing would have changed. And we would go on as we have been going on for the last 50 years. And why? What is the reason? Why can't we get out of this morass? The reason, my sisters and brothers, is the political system. And deep down inside, you know what I say is true. You have 50 years of history to prove that. The constitution is so free in the present constitution that whichever party gets into power, once it gets into power, it can ignore the people. It can renege upon its uh, election promises. It can do what it wants. It can put any amount of money it wants, and it can spend that money however it wants to, uh, to spend it. You know what? Because the constitution provides that the government will be in control of the parliament. That's the key. And if you don't break that, if you don't separate the government from the parliament and have the parliament there, the government there, you could, you could do what you want in elections. You are going to repeat what you have been repeating for the past 50 years. The constitution, you see, is so framed that whoever gets into power can ignore the people. And it is The Constitution that does that, because the Constitution states that the leader of the party that wins the majority of seats in the House of Representatives shall be the Prime Minister. See, you, you, you get it? Already in control of the Parliament. And the Prime Minister then appoints a cabinet. And they appoint a cabinet uh, any size they want. You know, we have a cabinet, we have a cabinet of 29 um, people, 29 people. You know that per capita 
with the largest cabinet in the world. All because you have to hand out favors. And the, these uh, ministers are going to come from the House of Representatives or they're going to come from the, the Senate. The net result of this is that once the elections are over, the people, through their representatives of course, have no control over the government. In fact, it is the government that has control over the people. This is neither the time, I don't have time to go into details of uh, the Constitution, but suffice it to say that our problem at this point in time is not who will form the next government, but how do we, the people, control the government, whoever is in office. If this system is not changed, then we are in trouble, whatever or whoever forms the next government. That being the case, at this point in time, the struggle is not who will form the government. That will come later. We'll deal with that later. But the struggle for now is a struggle for a system that will ensure that whoever forms the government, it is the people who will be in control and not they in control of the people. Once you have that new system in place, you can then concentrate on who or what will form the next government. The basic problem in this, uh, uh, the basic problem in this 50-year-old constitution is that the government controls the parliament. When democracy demands that the parliament, that is the people's representatives, should control the government. To achieve that, there must be a distinct separation of powers between the parliament and the government. No minister should be a member of parliament. And the reason is, elections at the parliament don't trot necessarily smart people. They trot people who have big mouth and sugar in their on the breath. Talk sweet. Look at some of the dances we have. Thank <laughs> you. 
facts of the matter. And that's where we have to, to, to spend our energy at, at the present time. But the present political system, the electoral process, will not allow that. As I say, for that to happen, we have to have proportional representation. It's quite simple. But even more important, proportional representation will remove the inclination to vote along racial lines. But I can guarantee you that if there's an election tomorrow, you could do what you want. The election is going to degenerate into a racial battle. That has been our history. The only way to change that is to have a political system where people vote for their interests. I must say we we voting for our interests. We're voting for the farmers group. The businessmen we voting for the business group. And that 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 sort of thing. The report, I don't know if you all have seen that bit, but the report of the Constitution, uh, which was shared by Mr. Minister Prakash Ramada, insists that we keep the Senate. Now tell me something. We are 1.3 million people. Why do we need a Senate? Why do we need two houses of parliament? Why don't we have one big house of representatives? Lloyd Best, in his wisdom, trying to deal with this problem, had said, we must have a macro senate. If Lloyd Best were alive today, he should say, he would say, we should have a macro house of representatives and no senate. Um, the constitutional reform now insists that we have a senate, two houses. You know why they did that, if you look at it well? They created the senate so that the prime minister and the ministers can come out of the senate instead of the house of representatives. The plain smart and foolishness. And um, the immediate problem, my brothers and sisters, that I see is that we fight for constitutional reform. And having won that battle, we then take on the battle of what do we do to become part of this government, either on our own or whether um, as, uh, as part of it. But more important, whether we have our own representation in the parliament of this country. Thank you. God bless.